Over the last six weeks, I've been running a creative writing course in a prison. Ten men have gathered with me uh, each week as we've explored together how best to tell stories, perhaps even our story. And at the same time as I've been doing that, I've been writing a memoir of Ronnie Lockwood's life with Dan and I. You may remember I, I wrote to you about Ronnie two years ago. He was the homeless man who came to stay with us one night for Christmas uh, 45 years ago and never left. Ronnie had spent much of his childhood in care, as had some of the men in my prison creative writing group. That's not a surprise. 20% uh, of the men in prison have a background in, in care. In the last couple of years that Ronnie was uh, with us, I began a ritual with him, which I wish with all my heart I'd begun 40 years ago. As he went to bed, I would shout to him, I love you, Ronnie. It seemed a little strange, but we got used to it, and some nights he would mumble back, I love you too. In the middle of the COVID epidemic, Ronnie had a stroke, and, and as he went into the ambulance, I, I wasn't able to go with him because of the COVID restrictions, and the ambulance door shut up. I shouted again, I love you, Ronnie, and he shouted back this time, I love you too. Neither of us knew that it would be almost the last time we would see each other. Uh, we were with Ronnie as he died. Uh, I was telling him I loved him as he was in my arms and Diane was singing to him, Jesus loves me, this I know. Why do I tell you that? Well, well, for two reasons. To let you and anybody else who's inclined to listen know this, that it's important to tell people who matter to us that we, that we love them. Those words are very, very uh, powerful. Ronnie was never arrogant, but he came to believe that he was special. Special to God. And special to the many, many friends he found later in life. You know, sometimes it's hard, not just with somebody with Ronnie's background, but hard for all of us to believe that we truly are special, that we have value. We live in a world that judges us by our achievements, by our possessions, by our looks. Some years ago, I came across a remarkable children's book. Uh, it's called You Were Special by Max Lucado. It tells the story of a little wooden figure who believes he's second class, spends all his life being judged by other uh, people. And life changes for him the day he meets Eli, the old woodcarver in the village. You know, I've always believed that some children's books are equally as good for adults. I think C.S. Lewis' Narnia series are like that, and I think You Were Special is in that category. In fact, some years ago, I was speaking to 2,000 adults in the Birmingham Symphony Hall, and I decided to read You Were Special to them. And as I did, a woman in the audience began to cry. Even as I brought the story to an end, her sobbing could be heard over the tale of Punchinello and the woodcarver. I'm sure you know that just twice a year, I write to our friends and supporters to see whether you can help us financially and care for the family. And if you can help us with a gift, we would be so very grateful. And if you can, I'd like to say thank you in a very special way we have commissioned a special Care for the Family edition of You Are Special. And if you can help us, no matter how small or great the gift, I'd love to send you a copy of that. I promise you that even if you don't have children of your own, it will be a blessing to you or to some child you know. This is a very, very special I pray that you and those you love have a wonderful Christmas. Please remember we will always be there for you as much as we possibly can be. Thank you for all your kindness to us. No charity could have better friends than you. Much love to you all.